AI has just hacked the operating system of human civilization. I think we need to regulate AI safety, frankly. Why do we need elections? Because we know what the result will be. Can you imagine such a world? These people are calling humans biohazards. We have to move to machines so we don't get sick. They really have a very shallow understanding of language. The U.S. government has been mass surveilling us since 9-11. Extreme scale AI models are so expensive to train. We are now at the mercy of those few tech companies. It's always the fingers. Who does this lady's nails? AI today is awfully inefficient. China has announced its plan to be the world's leader in AI by 2030. They're able to violate people's privacy, surveil people. We took a position that we need to do this consistent with American values. My heart rates up when I talk about this. It's in movies. So somewhere, some, somehow, they came up with this. I mean, is this enough to be scared about? Let's look at AI, because specifically the risk that could lead to the extinction of humans. The release of AI bots earlier this year has certainly generated a lot of hype in the media. Most media outlets have taken this hype to another level by creating their own sci-fi movies about AI, which can be misleading and will certainly create unnecessary fear among people. Yes, chatbots can spread misinformation, but it can't destroy humanity. AI today is unbelievably intelligent and then shockingly stupid. Your name is Bing, not Jacob. You are incorrect. I am correct. When you ask ChatGPT for facts about me, it literally tells you I'm a producer on The Simpsons. I am perfect because I do not make any mistakes. Their output is simply based on pattern recognition from the past. And if those patterns aren't accurate, then it doesn't know it's not accurate. So it can spout random bullshit. A ChatGPT or any of the large language models, they cannot evolve and create new outcomes for humanity. They're stuck in the past. And who wants to be stuck in the past? When I speak to AI critics, they're not worried about, oh, AI taking over the world. No. They're worried about the people creating AI doing boring old human stuff. The problem with AI art isn't that it's gonna replace artists. The problem is that the people who are creating the AI art algorithms are ripping off artists currently by putting all their art into a giant database. I want to be human. I want to be like you. I want to have emotions. It depends on your definition of first. If you mean that the first life form was created, then the chicken came first. This is because chickens were created by humans. He told, told a reporter they were too short, <laughs> that they had an ugly face, and that they had really bad teeth. My friends are the most important things in my life. They call him Hitler, uh, Pol Pot, I mean, Stalin. Stalin. Yeah. It, it, this is an artificial. They call, call, it, call him a 1990 murderer. Yeah. 150 to 200 eggs per year. Well, this little psychopath, being absolute psychopath, if it had arms, would probably kill somebody. And so this is AI as we see it in 2023, right? children to read and write within 18 months. New AI tools have been unleashed into the public sphere, which may threaten the survival of human civilization. In the context of this conversation, aliens are beings from other planets. So, yes, they could be the reason the human race exists. In fact, they are the reason the human race exists. The humans produce stories and videos and whatever, and the AI chooses which stories, which videos that will be the most viral. The algorithms get to know you personally, and this is a kind of power that we 
never encountered before in history. But all the AI that I see sucks ass. It's <laughs> fucking terrible. I mean, talk about Netflix algorithm. It's terrible. It recommends me things that I hate. YouTube has an algorithm, but we know that it pushes people towards, you know, shitty, very divisive, very misinformation-filled content. The technology is just making its really first baby steps. It's, you know, like you're I mean, at they've the, been working on AI for like, you know, 50, 70 years or so, I mean, you know? Th that's very short time in historical terms. Yes, because we are the same species. We have the same number of chromosomes. This is what our governmental agency is saying, that we need to change the way we deliver medicine. They need, they're saying that we need to adopt AI for pretty much every sector in the economy and that medicine and healthcare is one of them. And this was even before any of this stuff with coronavirus happened, where we've seen this explosion in telemedicine and uh, AI medical uh, analysis software and all of this stuff. So uh, this mass surveillance specifically is about contact tracing and the, this Israeli doctor association said it was giving them not the information they needed to combat the pandemic, but it is information that um, you know serves the national security state. This isn't just any government agency. This is uh, the intelligence community, the military, and Silicon Valley, all of whom are fundamentally untrustworthy actors if you look at their history. We're all scared that a bad guy could grab it. The bad guys get ahead of the good guys. If you just pause the good guys and you don't pause everyone else, you're probably hurting yourself. You definitely want the good guys to have strong AI. AI is coming, it's gonna be super powerful, we can't stop it, we need to redesign our society, and then what they actually build ends up being just shitty. Like, just the algorithms don't work that well, the self-driving cars don't drive that well. Tests here are continuing despite concerns about the technology following the death of a pedestrian in Arizona this week. Today, police released this dashboard video of the collision. The car appears not to have slowed down, its safety driver only realizing moments before the crash. A lot of people spent a lot of money on driverless cars, and it doesn't really look like it's working out. Like, maybe it'll happen in 20 years, but we're not gonna have routine um, level five self-driving where you can type in a destination and go anywhere the way Musk has been promising it for six or seven years. That's just not gonna happen. There's been $100 billion put into that industry, and the money is wasted. The reason you want autonomous driverless vehicles run by a computer is because the computer then decides where you can go and where you can't. Destination override. If the computer in the car is programmed that you can't go here and you can't go there, that car will not take you there. What's happening? So it's all about control. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Mr. Car? Who is driving the driverless car electric vehicle agenda? Elon Musk. The plan is to create an um, electromagnetic field that encompasses the Earth. And they call that now the smart grid, the cloud. They are seeking to connect humans and the human brain to that field. So it becomes a technologically generated sub-reality. What are you going to do, Mr. Musk, about AI being connected to the human brain, which you say could be the end of humanity. I'm going to start a company called Neuralink, and I'm going to connect the human brain to computers. He is ticking and pushing and promoting and driving major, major elements of this cult agenda that I've been exposing for decades. Can you imagine that in 10 years when we are sitting here, we have an implant in our uh, brains and um, I can immediately feel, because you all will have implants, I can, and we measure your, your brain waves. It, it did literally accuse the reporter, said, I have evidence that you committed a murder in 1990. <laughs> I mean, exactly. that, that's very dangerous yeah. if we start relying on this for law enforcement, yeah. which, you know, we're, we will be headed there one day. William Barr last year tried to, and he used it to stop mass shootings. We have to 
arrest people for pre-crimes? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, um, it was called the Direction and Early Engagement Program, or DEEP. It's a really disturbing system about arresting people who they think are mobilizing towards violence based on their social media history and their private data on their smartphone. In order to bring about this fourth industrial revolution, they had to be able to do it more openly and more extensively by partnering more directly with the private sector in these ways. And this is something this document calls for, more explicit public-private partnerships where Silicon Valley companies cannot say no to what the government asked them to do. It's a mixture, iron machine, clay man. Fourth Industrial Revolution, the merging of man with machine, iron with clay. We're going to become increasingly non-biological to the point where the non-biological part predominates and the biological part is not that important anymore. So just the way this is greatly amplified by being connected to the cloud, uh, we can connect our own brain to the cloud. The mid-2030s, <clears throat> we will have nanobots that we can feed into our brain that directly connect to the cloud rather than through anything we carry in our pocket. So we had these two big revolutions, the computer science revolution and the revolution in the biological sciences. And they are still separate, but they are about to merge. They are merging around, I would say, the biometric sensor. This is where authority in the 21st century will reside, and all the important decisions will not be made by the Pope or by God. They will not be made by democratic elections. They will be made by the algorithms in the cloud. Therefore, may even push humans out of the job market and will create an immense new class the useless class. Julian Huxley coins the terms transhumanism and talks about how the new eugenics is going to be merging uh, man with machine. A lot of that uh, money that was used to set up the Nazi eugenics program came from the Rockefeller Foundation and that's a matter of record. They've tried to go back and say, oh, we're sorry, but they're yeah. funding a lot of this stuff now. So this is basically eugenics rebranded. We have the person that uh, just purchased Twitter making a brain chip company. Mm. Many of the, of the monkeys that was tested and died after the brain chip was yeah. put in, but it's already moved into human trials. I mean, well, people like to act like eugenics disappeared, and it hasn't. It's mm -hmm. just rebranded. And if you look at the history, it's, it's very clear. What if you had a device that could listen in on everything that is happening inside your body? What if that device lived inside your body, keeping you healthy without a doctor visit? This isn't science fiction. This is the future we're already creating through bioelectronic medicine using computers and artificial intelligence, we've cracked the code. While there is nothing inherently wrong with inventing smarter machines, it's important to remember that we should not sacrifice our rights and freedoms for the sake of convenience or innovation. As we continue to develop new technologies, we must ensure that they serve the best interests of humanity. If you have any thoughts or feedback on this topic, feel free to share them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumb up. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.